Tak, už jsme zpátky. Uh, Oleg už je připravený, takže hi Oleg. Hello, thank you for bringing me here. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us today. And uh, yeah, so uh, Projector, what it is and how it works. Yeah, uh, let's start. So my name is Alex Chirukian. I'm product manage, marketing manager at JetBrains. And my first disclaimer is that English is not my, my native language and we have just 15 minutes, but I will try my best. So we will talk about Projector. I can promise that in the next 15 minutes, you will learn a few things like what is Projector, how to use it, and what is the Projector system architecture so that you can contribute to it and adapt to your needs. Uh, so uh, we all need remote development sometimes. Imagine that you have a powerful desktop computer at work and then um, on, and you usually run IDE on that computer. Um, so um, you want to use it from home or you want to use a lightweight laptop uh, to run dozens of uh, Docker containers on some MacBook Air, or you want to work on a tablet like iPad Pro. Uh, it's convenient to use your powerful remote computer for many reasons, like indexing works faster on it, everything compiles faster and so on. And it's convenient to use remote data storage to avoid copying of terabytes of data to your home laptop. And this is especially useful for people working with big data. So you already know uh, how to do this. You can run VNC or RDP and broadcast your screen over the network. But all these solutions have their own problems. For example, VNC is pretty slow and RDP is faster, but it is single user and it has issues with Linux clients. And in both cases, when the network speed drops, you see an ugly, blurry picture on which it is difficult to read, uh, read fonts. So both VNC and RDP require complex infrastructure. And usually, you need to use a VPN to connect to them. And of course, you can run ID on your computer and connect to data remotely via VPN. But VPN needs to be configured. And it's not very convenient. And indexing files via VPN will be not very fast. Uh, uh, some other proprietary solutions also exist, but I will not cover them in this talk. So Projector. Uh, we have in, invented our own remote work solution called Projector. It's very similar to VNC or RDP, and it allows you to broadcast your IDE window over the network. And not only the IDE, but in the future, any application is written in Swing framework for Java. So you can run the IDE in specific way on the server, like your powerful desktop, and then connect it to it uh, from the browser or using the client app, and it just works. Cons compared to VNC and RDP, it does only one thing. It projects only JetBrains IDEs, like IntelliJ IDEA over the network. And pros, uh, it does this one thing very well. Like rendering is high speed and all fonts are perfectly sharp because they are all vector fonts. And Projector is open source and free as a freedom. And Projector server is published under GPL license. So like Richard Stallman would be very delighted. And that's all we can finish this talk or not? Because maybe you need to understand how it works. So uh, Swing app. Uh, let's talk, take a look how a typical Swing app uh, application works. Basically, it is visually no different from any other GUI application. You have a window, and inside the window, there are all kinds of controls, like buttons, input fields, pictures, and so on. And this interface can be as complex as you like. like there can be dozens of buttons. Um, as simple developers, we think about this application at a high level of of controls, all these buttons and input fields. But Java graphics engine thinks about the application in a slightly different way uh, for the graphics subsystem. The reality looks uh, like a collection of lines, uh, simple shapes, fonts, and so on. And it is very low level presentation. Uh, so um, in general, uh, the architecture of Swing application looks like this. Uh, the root and main element for us is the toolkit. This is an abstraction for all the graphics, and each operating system has, has its own operation of the implementation of the toolkit. Um, 
And if you look in more detail, um, the framework operates with two types of components, heavyweight and lightweight. Uh, so heavyweight components are controlled by the operating system. And uh, this is some kind of physical representation of all our controls in the operating system. And lightweight components are controlled by the framework itself. And they are drawn on top of the heavyweight components. So the difference is that if your operating system only knows about orange buttons, they on, uh, then only orange buttons can be made using uh, heavyweight components and nothing else. And lightweight components can look whatever you want. For example, you can simulate the appearance of Windows XP or Windows 10 or KDE, whatever. So Java even has its own uh, skins for designs called Walk and Fail. And if you remember the name like Nimbus, that's it. Um, so uh, from the Java perspective, each heavyweight component has its own representation entity called peer. And from the point of view of the operating system and system level C++ JDK code, uh, peers are implemented in JDK as uh, a native code and we don't need to know how they work. It's like magic, but from the Java code point, Java code point of view, very complex language English, you know. So peers look, look like this, uh, like on the slide. So it consists of three dozen setters, and all calls uh, in it delegate drawing operations to something called graphics two D. Graphics on, on the screenshot. Uh, <clears throat> so what if you want to draw all of this in the browser? So we need to re-implement this entire graphics subsystem, but by ourselves. So we need to replace toolkit. We need to implement heavyweight components, implement our graphics to be on top of Canvas in the browser. And <clears throat> at the same time, better to simplify the work as much as possible so that you don't have to write half of the GDK yourself. Um, so a ABT and Swing uh, work slightly different on different operating systems. So we decided to implement only a subsystem for Linux for now. And that's why Projector only works um, on Linux on a bare operating system. And or if you want to use Windows or Mac, uh, it's need, it needs to be run in Docker or WSL, unfortunately. So uh, there are many different heavyweight components. So we simplified the work by implementing peers only for what is really needed for JetBrains IDEs to work. So absolutely any application will have at least one window, one panel, and uh, we have implemented all of them. And uh, different peers uh, also exist in our code, but they have empty stop implementations. Uh, methods that return in, uh, in such fake implementations, they always return zero, and methods that uh, like return void, they do nothing, and so on. So, um, and the final part is graphics 2D. So graphics 2D is um, it is, looks like on the slide, uh, but in this class we must implement as much as possible to work fine in the browser. And um, the drawing comments on the top of our version of graphics 2D uh, do not draw on the screen, but on the HTML5 canvas in the browser. So implementing this one was not so easy. Uh, for example, the first implementation in browser runs at 5 FPS, and those who play computer games should understand that 5 FPS is very slow. And therefore, uh, we came up with a set of tricky optimizations. Uh, so um, uh, this is how organized, so, so that each component is assigned to uh, its own message queue, and the queue looks like this on the slide. So uh, inside it has a builder into which we can put almost any sequence of graphic sections and optimize over them. So uh, the most tricky part uh, is images because they are not in vector format and still they must be transmitted over the network. And it turns out that we have five types of images in Swing and we implemented only three of them. And the simplest is a volatile image which is used to display like off-screen surfaces, and uh, it is rendered um, using render primitives, and they are sent as a separate co command, so that's easier. But uh, the next step is buffered image, with, which must be sent as a bitmap. And in order not to send images again uh, every time, 
we catch them. And to do this, we use an utterly wild heuristic that tries to understand whether the picture has changed or not. And images uh, have a very complex hash function. It goes through all the pixels and sums them somehow in hash function. And it takes a long time. Uh, so we do hashing using like a private undocumented APIs in JDK. It hurts a lot. So don't try this at home, but, but it works. So, but nevertheless, now it is very easy to find a wagging picture um, that is too big. But in the future, we will try to optimize this term. So, and the creepiest part is the multi-resolution image. Uh, they are used to draw something like two bar, um, two bars, yep. Uh, when the two bar is zoomed, uh, is zoomed in, the image is not scaled programmatically. Instead, another picture uh, of a larger size is loaded from the resources. And surprisingly, most of these images are um, um, like in real world applications, they display only a single resolution. So it's strange and surprising, but it is a fact. So we saved some effort and our version of multi-resolution image can only work with one resolution. So um, other types of pictures are not supported at all. So if someone tries to draw them, they will get nothing, they will get an empty area and Fortunately, we um, like they hardly ever appear in real world applications. So uh, the main loop on the server looks like this, uh, like on the slide. Uh, this may seem pretty lame, but in fact, many graphics engines do that, like Google's Filament, which is which runs inside Android, and we could try using schedule to try to pull something like that, but uh, this might be a more unstable solution since we would uh, have to resolve threat of our apps and all this system level stuff. Uh, so um, send all comments uh, function here. It collects all draw event, uh, events from all the queues. It collapses the duplicated and unnecessary messages. It collects all images. It compresses them and send over the web socket. And on, on the other side of the web socket, all this is displayed in the browser. So um, as a default network message format and protocol, we use hand-optimized JSON. This is how it looks on, on the slide. And you can see uh, all fields uh, all, all fields are single letter. So this allows you to spend less traffic and parse the protocol faster. And this is a wild optimization from like a dark era of technology. If you were a web developer in the early days of Ajax and JavaScript, uh, then you've probably seen all, all the stuff all the time. Uh, so other formats can be used too. For example, part above, anyone can write their own format, whatever, but JSON is too good to abandon it. Actually, it's very fast. Uh, so on on the back end, on the back end, you're probably used to to the standard uh, set of web servers for the JVM, like Kater, Tomcat, Undertow, Naked, JP, uh, Resin, Glassfish, Wildfire, and so on. So the problem is that the projector server part is derived from the OpenGDK code, uh, which means it is licensed under uh, GPL2, Viscos Pass Exception, and all these servers are published under the Apache 2 license, which is incompatible with GPL2. Um, however, writing a WebSocket implementation by ourselves is quite difficult. And therefore, we use a server called Java WebSocket, which was published on the GitHub by, by GitHub user 2 tall mate. So um, the only problem is that the server does not support HTTP which we need to, to serve static files. And the other Total Nate, I mean, uh, he uh, doesn't want to add the support. And we understand why. So we had to come with a hack, and there is concept like code drafts uh, supported inside the server. And we have implemented a draft for HTTP protocol by ourselves. And maybe it works. Who knows? It, it mostly works. <laughs> uh, so, clients, uh, we have two clients, a browser and desktop. And in fact, uh, this top client is Electron, so it has always been a browser. Uh, to implement such a client, you can do it yourself. You need to implement about 30 
drawing operations um, for all kinds of primitives, lines, uh, circles, etc. So it's not very difficult because HTML5 Canvas uh, can do everything already. And any decent graphics engine like Unreal or Unity, uh, etc., Gadot, uh, they all can do all the graphic stuff. Um, we are writing a client and server in Kotlin, making it very convenient for us to share the code be between the server and uh, web interface. It is not necessary to write the parsing of the network protocol twice again in different languages because there is only one language and it is Kotlin, remember. So uh, thanks to the fact that we have Kotlin, we can easily add existing protocols implementations as, as dependencies. Uh, for example, we can, use, uh, we, we can use our highly optimized JSON, but also we can use Kotlin X serialization, which is much nicer, but slower. And we can use protobuf, which uses less traffic, but um, puts more CPU out. And CPU out is essential on mobile devices, such as tablets, if you want to call it on iPad you don't want high CPU usage. So uh, and to avoid shortcut conflicts, uh, keyboard shortcut for conflicts between the browser and the client, we made a desktop client based on Electron. And in addition, it allows you to do several convenience things, for example, full screen on Mac. Uh, so and deployment options, we have three, like a Python script, Docker, and uh, a plugin inside the IDE. Uh, the main method is considered to be a Python script. It's straightforward to use you. Uh, like run pip x uh, projector installer and then a wizard will appear in the console and will guide you so all the steps like how to select port how to choose what what ide you want to run and so on so uh and docker you can build a docker image yourself from docker file on github or don't worry ready made image from from our own docker registry which is not docker hub by the way so um, we plan a lot of different improvements, like support for Asian languages by fixes of visual glitches. We have them, unfortunately. Uh, more AVT components, high DPI, speculative typing. Speculative typing, it is when you can write text and the letters will be displayed before the server response. Uh, we will write native clients for mobile platforms. Um, like we will optimize everything and actually we can do anything you write in our issue tracker called your track. Uh, so um, all contributions to this project are very welcome. All code is distributed under open source and free licenses. So exception like OpenGDK uh, client is mid expat and uh, Docker files are Apache 2. So while licenses are different for a reason, we tried to find a combination that would work for a variety of applications. So if you want to try to participate in the project, um, that will be very good. You can add features, you can fix bugs, you can uh, do something big while writing a completely new client and so on. Uh, so all links uh, are on our website, uh, like projectorjetbrains.com. And uh, there you can download everything you need to use. And there you can find all the GitHub links uh, and so on. So uh, that's all. Thank you for attending this talk and questions. Thank you for this awesome talk. Thank you for sharing technical details uh, for the JetBrands projector. And uh, thank you for your aw awesome and engaging presentation. <laughs> By the way, your English is very, really good. So uh, I hope you, you will join us uh, in future events. Yeah, so thank you. I will try to create a longer talk on something like Big Data Tools plugin or, the, or projector. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is one anonymous question. <laughs> what, uh, about, uh, what about idea to replace Canvas with images with React.js components and JSON data? Like probably author probably meant like sharing uh, state of React.js components over the network and just like local rendering of UI. Uh, have you considered that also? Uh, do I understand correctly that he wants to use a React.js on, on the client to speed up things using Shadow DOM, something like that? I think he meant like React-ish thing. 
like re re reactive sync. Uh, yeah, yes, we can do this. Uh, but uh, you see this, this infinity loop with 10 milliseconds wait. It, it's the most predict predictable thing to do. And this is the easiest way to do it at the same time. Uh, we can, we can, of course, we can do much better, but it requires time. This is a very young project, and maybe a um, uh, year after, after this time, we, we will like, roll out a completely different pipeline for publishing events. Uh, actually, we can, can try to react like things. Okay, uh, last question, just briefly, because we are running out of time. Uh, I see uh, that this is really quite similar concept like XORG, uh, which window manager, uh, which, which shares, which can be run over TCP, like over the network. Like they are also sharing like buffers and this kind of stuff. Like, did I get it uh, correctly or, or is there some fundamental difference between what project does and what XORG window manager over TCP does? Um, oh, oh, okay. Uh... Actually, it it is very um, it is the same thing, by the way. Uh, but uh, for us, it is highly optimized to send only Swing created actions. So it it is very optimized protocol. And the, the main thing when you use a remote solution, um, it is intended to to work without any lags. Like, and if you um, send over the network, like a general stream of all the events in, the, in your operating system, uh, it, it is quite huge traffic. And uh, it, our solution, like, it, it is more optimized for, for Swing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, are you going to join us on, on, on BAR, which is another conference, so you can talk with another people who are watching right now? <laughs>